G'day. And I'm doing something a little bit different this time. Kind of like my tutorial on how to retro game on modern OS's. This is to answer emails that I get through my YouTube channel and one of the most common emails I get is how do I record games like you do? And this is how I do it. And it's not very hard. Basically, I use a piece of software called Fraps and it is an awesome piece of software and it costs $47 Australian. Now there are free alternatives that you can find along the net but I've found and I've tried pretty much everything I've, I've noticed that Fraps is by yards the best option for capturing game data and seriously for the quality of this software $47 is just completely worth it if you're planning to do a lot of video capturing of games. Okay, so let's actually look at Fraps, the application. And here it is. And as you can see, it's incredibly simple. All you do is have an output folder, a video capture hotkey, set it to record full size or half size. Now just try these settings. If you've got a very high resolution, uh, capturing at full size is going to give you some lag problems. So click into half size is probably a good idea. Then you've got the frames per second that you capture. I've always captured at 30 frames per second and I've never had a problem. Uh, okay, and then you've got your sound settings and I'll go into that in a sec. And screenshots I never use. Now frames per second, this is actually quite interesting. I've never used the benchmarking, I'm not actually 100% sure what the hell it is. But over here you've got the overlay hotkey. Now normally I have that set to hide, but for this tutorial I'm going to have it visible so you can see it in action. Also, just remember that while I'm recording with Fraps, I'm also recording with another screen capture application to capture my entire desktop so you can see what is happening. So there's going to be some jerkiness and stuff going on with the video, but uh, that is just because I'm actually capturing video capture, capturing video capture. So that doesn't happen when you're just using Fraps. And I mean, it, it's so simple. Basically, this is Dirt 2. Now, as you can see, you've got a number in the corner. That's that overlay. See, I can switch it to the different areas in the corner. Or I can use the control key that I've got set up, which is Alt F12, to do the same thing. Uh, I should be able to anyway. There you go, Alt F12. That move, and doing it three times will turn it off and then it's back up in the top corner bottom corner is off now that's giving you your frames per second of the recording so all you need to do to record is hit F10 and now it's recording now obviously I'm recording in a window but this can record fine if you're recording full screen. In fact, it's designed for that. I'm just doing it this way so you can see what I'm doing. Now, as you can see, that's sitting there recording fine. So I'm just going to turn that off, press F10, stop recording. Now, Fraps has another really funky little feature where if you hold down the snapshot key, just keep holding it down, see it turns pink, that means it is now caching a 30 second cache of whatever you're recording. So it's not actually recording, it's just getting a cache. And when it gets to 29 seconds, it starts at the beginning and overwrites what it's already got, this kind of thing. Think of it like TiVo. And what this means is if you're playing a first person shooter or an action-y kind of game and then something cool happens, you go, man, I want to fraps that. You then just hit the F10 key, in my case, because that's what I've got it uh, set to, F10. You just hit the key and it'll uh, start recording, as you can see. But it also records the last, but it dumps from the case the last 30 seconds of gameplay. 
So say you're doing a first person shooter and you get a really awesome kill, you can press that button and you'll not only get a seamless transition into what you're doing at the moment you press the button, you get 30 seconds before that. Very, very awesome. Now, if you're wondering why that's stopping, it's because every time I press F10 because it's in window mode, it actually brings me out of the application, which is, doesn't happen when it's full screen. Okay, let's just minimize that. Now, the last thing we need to talk about is the sound. Now, the sound is a little bit tricky, and uh, we're just gonna, first thing we do is we're gonna open up control panel, and if your control panel doesn't look like this, just make sure you've got it set from category. So it says category, just set that to small icons. And come down and click on sound. Now obviously this is for Windows 7, but there's actually, Windows Vista is very similar, and Windows XP, to be honest it's been so long I can't remember. So if you're using XP, you'll have to go somewhere else. Anyway, if you click on your recording tab, You'll see that I've got my microphone, this is what I'm using to speak to you now. That's my default device, but if you come down, I've got this thing called Stereo Mix. Now, this might not be in your list, but if you right click and go Show Disabled Devices, it'll turn up. And then you can just right click on it and go Enable. I've got Disable because it's already enabled, and that's all you have to do. Now, we can get rid of those things. Oh, what, while you're here, it's just good to click on your microphone and go properties and just make sure levels is maxed out at a hundred. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Now come into here, you can see there's two tick boxes. The first one is record Windows game sounds and that just means it records the sounds that you hear through the speaker. The other one is record USB microphone in my case, but whatever your default device is. Now if the wrong one is turning up here, back in control panel, you need to go into sound and go into recording devices, click on what you want and go set as default. Click that button which is already grayed out. And you might need to restart perhaps for it to recognize it, but if then whatever's default will show up in record external input. Okay, so that's recording the microphone. So if I recorded a game now, it would have no game sound, but anything I spoke would be recorded. Now, the tricky bit is if you want to record both. Because if you just tick both of these boxes, what's probably going to happen is that you're going to get the game sound and you're going to get your microphone sound, but you won't be able to hear the microphone at all. It'll be too quiet. And here is an example of what I mean. Pretty weird effect. So I can knock down all these stupid things. So I hope it's not As you could probably hear, this game sounds sounded fine, but you could hardly hear my voice at all. So what you need to do is you need to go into your mixer. So let's just open the mixer. And all the different applications you have open are going to be in here. So I've got System Sounds muted, that's Dirt 2 that you've seen. This is Steam because I bought Dirt through Steam. Camtasia Recorder is what I'm actually using to record the desktop and everything you're looking at. And here's Fraps. Now, your instant natural reaction is to grab the slider and turn down the game volume of Dirt 2 or whatever your game is. Bad idea. What you want to do is click on Fraps and turn that down. Now Fraps might not be visible. If Fraps isn't visible, all that means is that you have to record a little bit of footage. So just press F10 and this will turn up in the mixer then. Now I find that if I put it at uh, you know 40, 40 or 35, then my microphone comes through crystal clear and I still get the good audio. And here is an example of a similar recording after I've done all that. Now, one day I want to finish with a nice neat car. Look at that. And as you can see, the sound levels are a lot better in that video. And you can hear my voice, but you can also hear the game sounds, which is what you want. Now, I've run out of time, but please watch part two, because there's a lot more information. Uh, see you then. Hope this has been helpful.